So now let's begin with the styling. And we're going to start from the top down. So let's begin by getting the add position a little more. So I'm going to use the inspect tool. And <clears throat> as you can see, here we have our section ID header. And then we have a row. And then the seven columns class. So we're going to apply some styling to this class. We're going to apply it to ID header row seven specifically. And this is what's so important about the sections because it allows us to zero in on specific column classes. Um, if we were to simply apply a styling adjustment to the class 7, it's going to apply that style every time you use 7 throughout your theme. But here we're going to specify to only apply our styling updates to the class 7 when it's inside of an ID of header. And you should only have one, one ID. Um, you can have you know multiple classes, but you should only have one ID on a page. Um, and so there's not going to be any conflicts. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the style.css file. And inside of here, I'm going to say header. And then we have the class row. And then we have the class seven. And inside of here, I'm going to apply some padding on the top. And let's just do 30 pixels for now. And then also let's align it to the right. And refresh. And so there we are still could be pushed down a little more. Um, uh, let's just set it at 50. Okay. So the next thing we're going to set styling on this navigation menu. And we're going to use our theme options that we created um, here. And I'm going to create another options group for the aesthetic elements. So under custom fields, we'll add new. And we'll call it design elements. We're going to change this to options page. Show this field group if options page is equal to options. And let's set a Gonna make a tab and I'm gonna start off with a uh, background for here and we're going to select the color picker Publish these and actually we're going to use the standard meta box. Let's refresh. So now we have 
the design elements on top and actually has changed the position of these. So we're going to make this one one. I want this one below. There we are. So for the menu navigation, I'll select the color. So now let's find the class for the nav bar. And I'm just going to take this. And now we're going to create a style.php file. By creating a style.php file, we can now create a dynamic style sheet. We have to do it this way because, at least to my knowledge, it's not possible to use PHP inside of a style sheet. And so we're first going to create a PHP file. And then inside of here, we're going to define a style area similar to how you would inside of your head tags. So now this can accept regular CSS. And the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to create another background attribute for this uh, navbar class, and we're going to make the color dynamic. And you can use your snippets, ACF, normal field from options page. The field name is menu background color. Now we have to include this style.php file into our header.php. We're going to put it down here at the bottom. So here under your snippets come under theme structure header.php head and then the style.php for dynamic style sheet let's refresh So now we have our menu background color changed. So now we have a little bit of distance between the bottom of this navigation and um, this uh, slider right here. And the way that we can remove that, you'll see that the row, each time you have a row, it automatically applies padding. And so I want to remove this margin bottom. As you can see, when we remove it, the slider moves up. So we're going to define by ID header, ID nav bar. Oh, excuse me, it's not ID nav bar, it's class nav bar. And there we are. 
So let's scroll down and take a look at these images. <clears throat> now, the first thing that I want to point out about your images, when you're using responsive, I do not recommend that you resize your images to the size that you want them to be. Um, and I also do not recommend that you use the add image size to the featured images unless you really want to set the image size. And here's why. So right now you can see that these uh, images are proportionate with each other. But if I open the image in a new tab, and all of them are actually proportionate with each other, it's just that the images are much larger than they appear here. Now, when we resize the window, watch how they get much larger. So notice the at the break point, they go from smaller and then they get much larger to occupy the full space. And that is the effect that you may want to keep. And so if that is the case, um, you will not be able to have the images respond like this if you make them small from the beginning because they're not going to blow up larger. Um, they're just going to increase in size proportionate um, to the dimensions of the area. And so going back to what makes responsive so flexible is that you do not set width and height boundaries. And so what I recommend that you do so that all of your images have the correct height is make sure that you crop them proportionately, but then allow the natural image to be resized by the column width and within the responsive framework. 